Mike Ruiz is very much a very busy guy, from model to photographer to director to television personality. Ruiz has led a life in which he has been absolutely unafraid to embrace every opportunity that has been given to him. He began as a model and as an actor himself, working as talent for more than a decade before he stepped to the other side of the camera. And as a director, uh, Ruiz has helmed music videos for a number of dance luminaries, including the likes of Vanessa Williams, Chantel, Christine W., Jody Watley, and Kelly Rowland, to name just a few. Though he says that he now prefers to stay behind the scenes, Mike has appeared as an expert in his field in several TV shows, including America's Next Top Model, RuPaul's Drag Race, Canada's Next Top Model, Kathy Griffin's My Life on the D-List, and the list just goes on and on. Um, as a photographer, he has uh, celebrities flocking to his high-impact, high-gloss uh, collection of portraiture, big names like Prince, Sofia Vergara, Paris Hilton, Nicki Minaj, uh, Katy Perry, Kelly Clarkson, and even Dolly Parton and the iconic Debbie Harry, among, again, many other stars. And to add to the roster of commercial clients such as L'Oreal, MAC Cosmetics, Red Book, and Shooting for Magazines, such as Vanity Fair, Flaunt, Interview, and others, which include more than 60 magazine covers. And one begins to really appreciate the full breadth of Mike's scope of work. We have gathered here to learn about the unveiling of a new and exciting app with which Mike Ruiz intends to help revolutionize the way we see and consume art. So now, with any, without any further ado, please help me welcome Mike Ruiz. Oh, that was such a great intro. You're so cute, your ears turn red when you get nervous. <laughs> and I am, what can I say? <laughs> oh, thank you for that wonderful introduction. Okay, well. well let's get to it. That was my line. <laughs> Okay, so let's just be uh, candidly here. Um, you're an accomplished celebrity and fashion photographer who has captured some of our most iconic and famed celebrities. You also, uh, you're also a music direct, video director, a creative director and producer, a men's fashion designer and a philanthropist. There's much for us to cover here, but as we'd love to know your thoughts about all your interests, and we'll start with photography. Okay, what do you want to know? Okay, so, well, uh, we'd like to know about, uh, we really want to know is you, uh, what sets your style of photography apart from the rest? Well, I think what sets any, any artist's work apart from any other artist's work is, is their point of view, you know, and their collective experience and what they've gone through in their lives and where they draw their inspiration from because everybody draws inspiration from different places and everyone's experience is, is vastly different. So um, that develops a very specific point of view, and that's how I developed my point of view, which um, is evident in my work. You know, like I always, I, well, I don't want to jump ahead. What's, what's the next question? No, no. Am by, I, <laughs> by all means, go ahead. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> well, um, you know, like I always, I always um, thought of my work as being um, hopeful and, you know, like, it, it, and it all stems back to my childhood when I, you know, when I had a, I kind of had a rough blue collar sort of up, upbringing and, you know, we, I, I wasn't exposed to a lot of the arts and, um, you know, and I had a very actively creative mind and I just didn't have any outlet for it. So I would fantasize very creatively and all of my fantasies were very colorful and were beautifully retouched and, um, you know, everyone looked beautiful in my fantasies. So, as an adult, I, I made that you know I made that manifest in my in my career. Okay, well, n not to age you, uh, but uh, obviously your childhood was a while ago, and uh, we know that you've grown as a man and as an artist. How do you sustain or, or how do you keep your work fresh? Well, it's again it it, it it's um it's what you know what I draw inspiration from, and what I draw inspiration from changes. Daily, you know, I, I I'm constantly being inspired by a myriad of things, by by my experiences, by my relationships, by um, by film, by art, you know. So uh, like you know, in that you know, I'm ob I'm be you know, and especially with the, you know, the advent of the crazy that crazy thing, the internet. You know, I'm I'm bombarded with 
content all the time. You know, I'm always being exposed to a myriad of things. So I get inspiration like 500 times a day. So that's, you know, like I always have a million ideas of what I want to execute creatively. Awesome. And what other artists or specifically what other photographers have inspired you? Um, well, there are a couple um, who are pretty prominent and it goes in, you know, I'll show in a second, I'll show on, actually, I'll, why don't I pull it up right now? Um, this, this is, this is the very first published work I ever had and it was, it was, um, I was commissioned to do this uh, because I was hugely inspired by photographers Pierre and Jill in the 80s and they, what they used to do is they used to hand paint on their negatives um, and they used, to, they used to be very, a lot more refined than I did, but they inspired me to do that. And at the very beginning of my career, um, you know, which preceded Photoshop, this was a long time ago, um, I used to hand paint on my photographs. And this is an example of that. It's, you can't really tell because this is a low res image that I pulled up off the internet. Um, but basically, you know, I just did, I did enhancement. So it kind of gave it a surreal feel, but, um, you know, I did it all, you know, by hand with paints and pencils and, and um, you know, so, but in answer to your question, I was hugely inspired by Pierre and Jill. And then, of course, I was inspired by the greats like Avedon and Penn. And, um, and um, someone who's relatively my contemporary, Reuven Afonador, actually, when I was a model, I used to work with um, photographer Reuven Afonador a lot. And he, his whole creative process was so intense. I was, it was so mesmerizing me to, to, you know, for me to watch him. Um, so I was hugely inspired by him, by his creative process. It's not really evident in my work, but his creative process, I, um, I drew a lot of inspiration from. Excellent. And um, needless to say that you're also uh, now a source of inspiration for many young uh, and aspiring photographers. Could you speak about not so much how you got started, but rather what has been the trajectory that you've taken it and where is it that you're going today as far as that is concerned? My trajectory, um, you know, my, my, life, my life was one big, happy, haphazard series of, of, of um, me being ready and being presented with great opportunities. Um, you know, I was, I, I was prepared for all the opportunities that were presented to me, but, you know, I started in photography. I got, I, you know, this is, you know, I tell, the, I tell this story very often, but I, I actually got a camera as a gift when I was um, 30. Oh, 29, actually. Um, I, I started shooting when I was 30. Um, so, you know, it's was, it was relatively late in life to get, you know, to embark on a creative career. Um, but that's, that's how I started. You know, I got this camera, and, you know, and that camera immediately became a spigot for everything that I had to say, both creatively and politically and philosophically. And, you know, and I didn't know it at the time, but, you know, like I was, it, was, it became this outpouring. Like, I, I swear, I opened that box and that camera became like a tap that just I couldn't turn off. And, you know, it's, it continues to gush to this day. Um, but but from, from that, you know, the, from my, those humble beginnings, I just started, I started shooting everything in sight. And I didn't, I didn't know that I wanted to land on, you know, fashion or, you know, entertainment-driven photography like I, like I do commercially. Um, you know, so I was shooting landscapes and, you know, I would do little landscapes with Barbies and I'd go to the grocery store and buy fish and, you know, like Barbie and, you know, it was just these very surreal little landscapes I used to love doing. Um, and I, I, taught, I taught myself, you know, how to use strobes. I bought a bunch of very expensive equipment, didn't know how to use any of it, and I taught myself how to use all of it. And, um, and then I started shooting in my living room in Los Angeles. And, um, you know, pretty, pretty immediately, um, you know, I started this technique where I was, I was painting on, on images. And that, like, pretty immediately got a lot of attention. And I started shooting a lot of editorial. And I started shooting a lot of celebrities. But, you know, I w it, was a, it was editorial, so I wasn't really making any money. So I was still living in my apartment in East Los Angeles. Um, well, East Hollywood, actually. East LA is, is a little bit of a a stretch, but I was in, uh, living in the East Hollywood, which was, you know, it was kind of sketchy, but um, I, was, I was shooting a lot of celebrities, and they would come over to my apartment, and I'd move all my furniture and set up some lights, and, um, you know, and I used to do, I did that for like three, like two or three years, and then um, I opened a, I was tired of doing, moving my furniture every other day, so I opened a photo studio with some business partners called Meow House in Los Angeles, and that's where I would shoot for the next 15 years until, you know, we just closed this, this past year. 
you know, the damn economy. But um, yeah, so that's that's. Um, am I am I digressing too much? What? No, by uh, not at all. Actually. Um, what uh, we'd like to know, I mean, obviously then uh, this was pretty much a series of happy coincidences. Uh, it wasn't so much by design that you uh, actually went for a specific, uh, during these specific times uh, in, your, in your career, you weren't really designing specific moments uh, where you were uh, doing the, uh, the Photoshop, uh, the pre-Photoshop pictures. Right, right. Yeah, that, that, that was a happy accident. I actually, um, you know, I was trying to retouch my own photos, um, you know, like uh, the way they used to in old Hollywood. And I got, I got like a book on how to do it. And I bought all the, equi the pencils and the paints. And, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not a very meticulous illustrator or artist. So, you know, I was, I was very heavy handed and it looked really, you know, I mean, you could see all the pencil marks and stuff, which, you know, to some may look like really bad retouching, but I thought it, it looked kind of cool, and evidently so did several magazines, because this magazine commissioned me to do um, several. I, I ended up working in this magazine for years doing this style, and um, you know, of course, then along came Photoshop, and you know, and then I started manipulating images digitally, and um, um, and yeah. Could you tell us a little bit more about the evolution of when you went into Photoshop? How did that change with uh, with the advent of the technology that you were using? Was there a, a, a big learning curve? Um, how how did you fall into this? Well, you know, I mean, you know, I just, I just, you know, I always, I always fancied myself like an innovator. You know, even though I started late in life, I, you know, I, I had a lot of ground to make up. So I was always looking for like the, you know, the most innovative thing and. Um, and early, early on in, in Photoshop's history, there was a, there was a couple of re, there were a couple of retouchers who used to do this really heavy-handed effect that made everyone's skin look like plastic, and it was very surreal looking. And I, I, I really liked it, so I would I was asking this retoucher to do all of my stuff very heavy-handedly, and it, it um, and that's sort of how I morphed from you know I always had an aesthetic where it, everything had to look slightly surreal, like I, you know I wasn't a big you know I, my my whole goal was to to create a better reality, a more perfect reality. So, you know, I, I'm not a gritty sort of reportage kind of photographer. That that never really resonated with me. You know, I was always about like hyper style and like hyper, you know, surrealism. And that's kind of how my, my style sort of evolved. And again, it's all rooted in my desire, my hopefulness and my desire to create a better reality for myself and ultimately and ended up, you know, hopefully creating, you know, a better visual reality for, for others. And so it is. Um, I, for one, think that photography is uh, an intangible art form that is pretty hard sometimes to conceptualize. And uh, um, I've been on a set w both in studios and location, and I've seen how sometimes outside forces such as lighting and weather conditions, uh, you know, and the confluence of different personality types, how they might affect the overall success of the photo shoot. As a photographer, how do you juggle with all these different forces that come into play? I, I you know, I'm a, I'm a really good manager. I'm a good, I'm a good manager, and I'm a good leader i guess because i'm i'm able to you know i'm able to take the helm of like a production and just make sure that everything is getting done uh, efficiently and effectively and to you know to my creative you know does, you know like what what i ask for creatively so you know and I, i'm just really good at managing some people are just really good at one thing or the other but i think i have a pretty broad skill set i'm i'm able to manage I manage people, you know, so I, I'm actually like, I play producer and director and photographer. I, I kind of do it all on my shoots. So, you know, that's how I'm able to, you know, and I'm really, I'm really good with people. I worked, you know, when, when I lived in New York in the early 80s and um, from 88 to 92, and I worked in restaurants, several restaurants, and, um, you know, waiting on tables. And I, I, I think I developed my people skills back then because I'm, I'm able to, you know, I'm able to, to, go between several different personalities and juggle them all and make sure that they all get together and, and are, get along together. And um, I think I've, I've mastered that, that skill. Um, you know, and certainly, you know, 18 years of photography with all the personalities that I've worked with, you know, I've, I've certainly mastered the ability to make sure everyone's doing what they're supposed to be doing.
Okay, and just out of curiosity, what has been your greatest moment, or the most frustrating one for that matter, uh, with respect to a photo shoot? My, my greatest f mo moments, uh, my greatest photo shoot moments? Yes. Um, you know, they, it, it changes all the time, you know, like I, because I'm constantly being inspired, you know, like when, 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 I, when I do something, I do something creative, and I, I sort of like get it out of, I purge it out of my system. It's, it become, it's a catharsis, you know, when you're creative, you do something because you have something to say, and you have, so you, you say it, and once it's said, you know, you, you kind of get it off your, off your plate, and you move on to the next thing. So you, typically, the, the, the moments that I'm most gratified by are of my most recent shoots, because those are the things that are fresh in my mind, things that I've been inspired by m recently, you know, most recently. So it's 99% it's of the time, it's, it's the last shoot that I did that um, has been the highlight of my career, you know, which I'm really grateful for, because you know, I still get excited about stuff, and I still look at m pictures that I took, and I'm like, oh, my God, you know, I'm so proud to show them like a little kid. So it's really, um, it's really a, a wonderful thing that I get paid to do this. Okay, and give us some insight. Is there have there been any train wrecks, uh, or ha has there been any kind of conflictual uh, moments that you care to share with us? Oh, well, you know, of course, I can't mention any names, but there, there, you know, there's a, a often a lot of conflict. I mean, I've had people storm off of shoots. I've had to like get in my car, and you know, this is in L.A., and get my car and drive after them, and you know, bring them back to the shoot. It's you know, I've been, I've. There, there've been a lot of conflict, but I tend to be, um, you know, a problem solver. So I always resolve everything. You know, as far as like you know, um, things that are beyond my control. I was doing a shoot in the Caribbean, for a network. I was doing a network advertising campaign, and um, they wanted uh, this very specific lagoon in Virgin Gorda, but they didn't do any research um, to find that there were it was um, infested with jellyfish. So and, you know, and, the, and all the subjects that I was shooting were meant to just be kind of like um, hovering in the in the water. So you know, of course, I dove into the water just to kind of get a lay of the land, and I was immediately stung about 400 times by you know, ho fortunately not deadly jellyfish, but you know, I had I was swollen and welts and. But um, so that was that was like a difficult shoot because we, we still had to do the shoot. I had to put a wetsuit on. The subjects had to put the, with their wetsuits on, and we we still had to go ahead with it. Well, we're glad that we still have you with us. Uh, <laughs> um, now, a time management question. Um, you obviously, as I was introducing you, there were you deal with a myriad of causes, and uh, you have a myriad of in of interests that uh, you work with um, anywhere from being a uh, director to creative director, fashion designer, um, obviously photographer, a philanthropist. Um, how do you juggle uh, all these things and how do, you, how, do, uh, how do you find balance in your life? Well, that is the balance. The balance is doing all of these things. You know, if I, if I, I, I just, you, you, they all sort of feed off of each other, you know, and they all, inspire each other you know i can't do these days i can't do one without doing the other i can't i can't do a philanthropic thing without being inspired creatively and vice versa i can't do something creative and have it be completely devoid of some sort of philanthropic inspiration um and in that that has become the balance for me you know it's just it's just like you know like because i i feel so you know for for a little while there you know when i was i was having a very successful career and things were going great and I, I just felt like something was missing and um, and I and I but I and I, I had these feelings of guilt and then and then I started I realized it's because I was I was so grateful that I was being you know bestowed with all this good fortune and I wasn't doing anything to give back so I, I started doing stuff and you know that became the balance for me and 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 now like I, I just you know there's so many causes and, and you know the more that you do the more that you see needs to be done and I, I just you know, I just, I tr really try to tie a philanthropic edge into every single thing that I do, including the app that I'm, you know, that I'm launching today. Wonderful. Um, I, I would love to have someone actually scroll through some I of the images. Okay, yeah. just, I think it's so interesting to see um, uh, just the evolution of your work. And if you could just tell us a little bit about some of the images that um, pop out and uh, well, really I, speak I was, to you. I, 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 um, um, compiled this group of images. This is, this is sort of like a quasi arc of my career, um, chronologically. 
Mm, not so much current. Well, it's it's just a it, it's it's a it's a pick a selection of of images that I think represent my evolution as a as an you know a photographer. Um, this was pretty early on. This was in. Um, this is before I knew how to use strobes, and I would shoot pretty much everything exclusively daylight. This was for Condé Nast Traveler. We shot this in um, um, the outback in Australia. Um, and then, you know, I, and then I started, you know, I started working with many celebrities. And you know, and here's some inspiration of one of the photographers that inspired me, Avedon. You know, this is this image is based on a very famous image that um, Avedon did, did with Nastasia Kinski. And um, okay. No need to linger on her. Um, <laughs> um, this Dolly Parton. You know, I, 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 you, you know, I'm wondering if this is a good time to take questions because um, I realize that I don't really have much to say about a lot of these <laughs> images. Um, well, actually, I mean, I, I do want to speak to technology itself, and you know, with the advent of technology and its ever increasing influence upon our daily lives. I want to really understand how it's affected your shooting, your, your style of photography. Technology? Yes. Well, I mean, there's obvious, you know, there are obvious ways, you know, like I, I started shooting digitally. Um, I resisted for a really long time, but I started about six years ago shooting digitally. And, um, you know, up until then I was shooting film. So that was, you know, that was, I, I resisted for a long time, but I finally gave in. and. Um, and then once I realized how amazing technology was, I, so I embraced it. Now, like anything technological that I can inco incorporate into my into my shoots, into my work, you know, like I have iPad di wireless iPad displays when I'm shooting to give to the client so they can see what I'm shooting simultaneously, and you know, so like I, I just I, I always embrace technology, and and hence you know my desire to create an app, you know, my um my desire in creating this app is the the convergence of my desire to embrace technology and to bring art to and photography to a much broader audience um, and, and, to, and to make it interactive you know like I, I, I think it's really important to have people participate in art as opposed to just view it you know to just be a, a, a watcher you know to truly be inspired by something I feel you need to be engaged by it and you need to participate in it. And that's what this app is, is that it's, um, it's a way for people to engage in my creative process. There's a lot of content. There's a lot of behind the scenes footage of how certain images were made. There's even interviews with models and, um, and you know, the artists that worked on, on the shoots with me. And then there's a studio feature where you can upload your own image. And um, Carlos and Amy will give a demonstration at the um, end of the hour. Um, but basically, you can, I've isolated elements from images of mine where you can incorporate those onto your own image that you upload into the app. So it's really um, my way of engaging the, you know, engaging people in my creative process. You know, and that's how, that's how technology has changed my, my way of thinking and how I approach things creatively because now I shoot everything with that in mind. Like how, if I'm shooting something, how can I engage people? You know, how can they become participants in it? You know, so that's kind of how, my, you know, like it's, it's altered my way of thinking as opposed to me like cr creating an image for the sake of, you know, being, you know, creating an image. You know, I think of a whole other set of, of technological creative things now. Um, I think this is a, a great opportunity to actually take some questions from the audience. Um, if anybody has anything uh, salient that they want to address or uh, are curious about anything. Hey. Hi there. Hi. I have a friend of mine who's a photographer, professional photographer, and he has started not for his clients and stuff, but for himself, shooting a lot on the iPhone and playing with different lenses on the front and just seeing what, he's, what mm -hmm. he gets with scene composition and lighting and stuff. And I was wondering if, you've, if you do that and what your experience is with it. Well, you know, Instagram has become a big part of my self-expression, and I, I, I do. I, do I, I take a lot of pictures with the iPhone, and I manipulate them in, in, you know, with Instagram, and I also have Photoshop for the iPhone and for the iPad, and I use, I use those to, um, you know, to manipulate images that I take with my iPhone and my iPad. So, but I, I, don't, I don't do it commercially, but, um, but who knows? You know, that may change. You know, the technology is progressing so 
quickly, you know, like it's, it, you know, the quality of, of content that you're able to capture with an iPad or an iPhone these days is pretty amazing. And I, I know of a couple of people who have actually made careers shooting exclusively on the iPhone. Um, you know, they make a pretty decent income from, from shooting exclusively on the iPhone. So um, uh, as for me personally, you know, I, I still do it for, you know, just, um, it's just sort of a, a, a journey in discovery for me at this point, but it's not um, something that I don't, you know, I, I, I don't think that I, what am I trying to say? I, I think I, you know, I'm open to the possibility that I may end up using an iPhone or an iPad or, or you know, some, some device of that nature to create art. And th basically, that's what you know. Again, that's what my app is. Is you can take a picture with the iPad and you can you can manipulate it and do stuff. And you know, so it it and and it, you can incorporate things that are specific to my photography. So it, that's how I engage people in my particular creative process. I'm mostly interested in acting and modeling until meeting you and became interested in photography a little more, even though I've been taking pictures probably my entire life, which leads me to the question, you looking for an apprentice for any oh, chance? <laughs> always, always. That's basically it. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm, you know, like I, that's, that's another big part of, of what I, you know, what I enjoy doing is I um, enjoy, you know, I, I enjoy like the um, collaborative thing and, you know, I join mentoring and, and helping people kind of find their footing, and you know, and and you know, and it becomes like this um, circle of of really great energy. You know, like I have two wonderful um, interns who are here with me tonight. I, I hope I didn't embarrass you by saying that, but but they're both very accomplished on their own. You know, I mean, I I just I just, but you know, we we all work really well together, and um, and it, that's a big part of my my. I don't know my my what. It's a big part of my personality. My personality, or I don't know. It's it's just like I I I I, I enjoy doing that. So yes, I embrace your. Um, please send me an email, and I'd be happy to. <laughs> well, you know, I, I don't know. I'm trying. You know, <laughs> I'm I'm trying to create you know a brand for for specific reasons. You know, not only that are you know not only selfish reasons, but. Um, you know, I'm, I am trying to create a brand, you know, and also with, um, you know, with my app, which is called Pretty Masculine, you know, that's something separate. You know, it's a whole sort of amalgamation of work that I've created that is separate from my photography career. It's, it's not related to my commercial photography. It's a whole separate thing. And I'm really trying to sort of create like, um, you know, just like a new, a new sort of idea in pop culture about about what it means to be masculine, what it means to be feminine, what it means to, um, what it means to um, <laughs> to have my fiance up here on stage with me. Hi, uh, you talked a lot about surrealism versus realism and the grittiness and how you prefer um, surreal or taking surreal photos. How, what do you do when you see flaws? Do you make them perfect to you? Do you enhance the flaw as a thing of beauty itself? How do you really deal with that? That's a, that's a really, really good question. Um, I, usually, I usually sort of get a sense from the subject what, how they feel. And if it's something that they embrace and something that they celebrate, then I, I do it as well. I, don't, I, would never, I would never erase somebody's character or somebody's... You know, I don't like, th they're not really flaws if they've, you know, if people embrace them. You know, God knows I have a myriad of things that I've embraced <laughs> um, um, about myself. So I don't, you know, I, I don't, I don't. But if, you know, but again, if it's, if it's, if it's contrary to what I'm trying to achieve and the subject is okay with it, then I might alter things, but I don't, but not, not really, not a lot. You know, to when, when I, when I perfect things, I tend to just, do the obvious things, you know, like if somebody has a blemish or somebody looks tired, you know, I make them look not tired and get rid of their blemish. But, you know, if somebody has um, a scar or something like that, is that is that what you're referring to? Or what they, they see as a flaw or something. If you don't see it as a flaw, I guess it's, you know, it's up for discussion. Well, exactly. You know, and that's part of anybody's creative process is what, you know, is what they, 
is, is how they perceive things and how they want to convey you know, an I a certain idea. You know, and it's not really me trying to change people, it's me trying to create a an option, an option for people to consider. That's, a, that's all I'm trying to do as an artist is to create something that people will consider. Like I'm not saying that this is wrong and this is how I want you to look at things. It's like, no, this is great, but consider this for a second. And that's pretty much, that's why like, um, I do a lot of um, tr transformation type photography. Here, let me scroll through it. But um, yeah, I tend, I tend to, I always, you know, like I, for, for a period of time in my career, I was doing a lot of, um, I was calling them transformations where I take celebrities and just portray them out of context. Just again, uh, to, to offer an alternative. And you know, it's not, it wasn't like, it w I would never do anything that was so contrary to who they were as a person. It was usually bringing something that I identified in them and bringing it to the surface. So that's what, um, you know, for example, I mean, this is not that big of a stretch. You know, this is Dita Von Teese, but she always had that jet black hair, and I just, you know, I wanted to do her as a blonde. And, you know, it's something as simple as that. It just gives some, you know, it gives, you know, her and pe people who have an idea of what she is an alternative, you know, something else to consider. Um, and um, just to, um, just to, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go through these images. You know, like uh, this is like a good example of like just surrealism. You know, like there's, it, it's perfect, but you know, there, but it's, you know, like uh, the snaking of the hair and stuff. You know, like I don't, there's something kind of eerie about it, and you know, I've clearly like, you know, like reptilian about about this image, but. Even you know, even within that, you know, I, I try to celebrate those things, and that's that's what that's. In answer to your question, I try and celebrate things that peop some people might not think is attractive, or some people might have you know consider a flaw. You know, I just I, I try to celebrate those things. You know, and I my my whole thing too is about empowering people, and 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 you know, I I never I never. Um, objectify anybody, men or women, even even like if it's super, super sexy what I'm shooting, I, it, it's always, um, it's always, you know, I always put them up. I always take them up a notch and I, you know, and I do it consciously. I do it very consciously. I try to, you know, I try to empower people and I try the viewer to be, you know, to, to, to be empowered by looking at the image. Hi there, how are you doing? Great, how are you? Very good, very good. Um, I just want to know your, what are some of your favorite uh, cameras and lenses that you tend to grab all the time and uh, also a little bit about your workflow, like after you take the photo, what happens after? Well, if I'm, sh if I'm doing a shoot for myself, if I'm doing like an editorial shoot or, or something, you know, like, you know, for I've been shooting for the app for the last year and a half. So if I'm doing a shoot for my own person, I, um, wh wh I, I like to use a Canon. I, I use a 5D. You know, I have a Mark II and a Mark III. I, I use them both, and I use a myriad of lenses. I like um, a long lens. I, I usually like the, um, the 180 uh, macro lens for, you know, for shooting beauty. Um, and then you know, as far as my workflow goes, you know, as soon as I shoot something, I, you know, I immediately send it to my retoucher. And you know, I have a really symbiotic relationship with my retoucher. Like I just send her stuff, and she knows exactly what, you know, what I like and what needs to be done. And, you know, if I shoot things in a certain way, she'll know what needs to happen to that image. Um, and um, that's, that's pretty much it. Like, I'll, I'll oftentimes be uploading images after every shot that I, you know, if I shoot a shot, I'll load it onto my, you know, hard drive, and then I'll, I'll, I'll send, I'll do an edit, and I'll send her an image. Um, and then I'll do the next shot, and I'll do the same. So that's, you know, that's, that's my, like, childlike quality, I guess. You know, like, I'm, like, so eager to, like, get it you know, to get it to the finished state that I, I, you know, I expedite it that way. Well, hello. Hi, Mike. Hi. Well, you know, I'm also a photographer, and I'm one of your biggest fans. Oh. You and uh, Debbie LaChapelle are my icons and influence my photography always. Oh, thank you. Um, have they ever compared you to him? And also, when somebody hired you to do a job, do they tell you, I want this and I want that? Would they let you put your point of view, like, colorful and craziness that people love? Um, in, in answer to your question about David LaChapelle, um, early on they did, but it's, it's pretty clear that my point of view is vastly different from his. And um, you know, that comparison stopped being made a long time ago. Um, I, it hasn't been made in years, but you know, early on when I, you know, I was doing really colorful stuff, you know, 
people immediately, you know, thought because the, the only other person doing that at the time was David LaChapelle. Um, you know, and I, you know, and I have to say, Pierre and Jill, Pierre and Jill, who inspired me greatly, inspired David as well. Like he's, you know, we just split off. He, like we were both inspired by the same person, but we both split off in different directions. But you know, only based on our point of view. You know, David's a brilliant artist, and um, you know, I really admire his work. Um, and um, what was your second question? I'm sorry. Did somebody hired you and they said, I want oh. this and I want that, would they let you do your twist? Um, sometimes. There are some clients, you know, some clients who encourage me to, to put my spin on things. And then there are some, you know, obviously this, you know, this commercial photography is, um, a, you know, a convergence of art and commerce. So you have to accommodate both. And um, a lot of times commerce overrules art so you have to you know you just have to make accommodations for stuff and you know but people won't come to me if they want a really gritty you know reportage kind of shoot so they n they pretty much know what they're getting when they come to me in the first place so in answer to your question yeah i they you know i i, I pretty much am always allowed to put my <laughs> spin on things but in varying degrees i mean you know there there are times where i i have to be conservative you know because I, I do have some conservative clients you know and i gotta make a living i got a mortgage to pay can i can i just i just want to i want to say something there's there's this, this series of i'm sorry there's this series of images that um there was a period in my life where i um uh, um you know, I want. You know, I started painting on photographs. Well, I wanted to collaborate with artists. So there was a whole period in my career where I became very collaborative, and and that sort of made me realize that I wanted to celebrate artists. Like this was, um, you know, a young a young kid who was out of art school, and you know, we ended up getting. He I ended he ended up doing a you know from this published work, he ended up doing a ton of stuff because I you know I I, I love elevating people who I collaborate with. You know, I don't. I don't take all the credit for it. Um, so that's, that's become a very important, prevalent thing in, in what I do creatively and what I do professionally. So I just wanted to mention that. And this is a really good example of how I collaborated with artists. You know, I shot the photo, and I sort of art directed the art, and, and, um, and the artist created this. And you know, this is a different artist, an illustrator. He illustrated over the image to kind of give it a sketch-like quality. Um, and this was uh, one more, and I will shut up. This is um, this was a fashion illustrator, Robert Richards. He was really amazing. So, um, anyway, that just I just wanted to mention that I felt it was really important. It was a really important part of my uh, my um, evolution as an artist was to be inspired to the extent where I actually incorporated the people I was inspired by into what I was doing. So, um, and I, I, I continue to do that. And you know, and, and answer to your mentorship program, that's kind of what I do. You know, like I, I, you know, everyone who's working on, you know, on the app and everything. You know, I want, I, I want to celebrate them, and you know, and they all have, as you will see in a second, they all get credit on the app. Well, thank you, thank you very much, appreciate it, and thank you all for coming tonight, appreciate it.